Okay, we've done what does a PLC do? What that little presentation did was put you in the picture of what the operator is doing or what you would be doing if you were running the system instead of a PLC. And then of course, you as the operator or the controller, you have input sensors and output devices, motor controls, your muscles, your hands. So we discussed the input devices and the output devices, the field devices, and now we're going to connect it up to PLC hardware. And by PLC hardware, you can see a whole bunch of it right behind me. Right here you see my Micrologix Galaxy. There is every Micrologix that they made. The first one was the 1000, which is right there. Then there was the 1100. Then, the, then there's a 1200, a 1500, and a 1400. They didn't make them in necessarily the numerical order. It was the th 1000, and then it was the 1200 and the 1500. Then it was the 1100, and then it was the 1400. The premier Micrologics right now would be the Micrologics 1400. I have all of them connected up, and I have some net ENIs and other interface devices for the Micrologics that don't have Ethernet. Up above that, you see an L45 that I use for motion control with some block I.O., and up above that, you see a couple Control Logics chassis. And there's other hardware behind me that you can't see. But hardware. So let's, let's talk about hardware. The first presentation, we were looking at this. And that was we had a controller made up of logic with logic in the memory. Then we had an input electrical interface, output electrical interface. We were interfacing three photo eyes into the input. And we, for an output, were turning on and off a electronic switch that's switching power to the motor. And that's where we left it. So now let's throw some hardware at this. Well, the centerpiece of all PLCs is the processor. And the processor is not a controller. A controller has to have I.O. terminals on it, electrical interfaces for inputs and outputs, and a processor to be a controller. So we need a processor, and the processor has memory, it has a chipset. This one has two communication ports on the front. The top one, you recognize that, that's Ethernet, TCP, IP. The one right below it is RS-232 DF1, and you have a key switch, run remote program. You have six LEDs, it tells you whether or not it's running, force is enabled, fault is red if there's a fault, ENET will flicker if ENET, the Ethernet is active, you have a battery OK light, and you have an RS-232 active light. That's our processor. To that, we have to have an input module or card through terminals that the photo eyes connect to. We'll do sensor and output device wiring in a later factory rat presentation. We also need an output module with screw terminal. So there we have the three items. All three of these need something that you don't see there. They need a power supply. If you look at this power supply, you'll see that you have 120 or 240 volts in. The power supply gives you 24 volts DC on that set of terminals, but that's not for the PLC. You could use that for field wiring for some of your devices. What you don't see is on the back of that power supply, there's a connector that will connect into a chassis. Look at this picture of this chassis on the far left side. On the outside, you will see some connect. Power supply slides in there, and then you have slot zero, the first one. Notice that it has two connectors on the back plane. The processor, that can only go in slot zero. That second connector that the other slots don't have, that's the control bus that actually activates the I.O. module. So when you look at a hardware chassis and you see that one slot has more connectors than the other, that's your first clue. It's an active back plane. Throw all that together, we have a PLC in its entirety. Power supply, processor, and some I.O. modules. I picked this older PLC. This is a Slick 500 because there's millions of them around out there. However, let's go back a little bit further to the PLC-5. This is not the first PLC, but this goes way back. These things are boat anchors. Takes two grown men and a boy to carry one. Processor, again, is in the first slot. Then you have I.O. modules. And the unique thing about these processors was everything had to be on the front of the processor. All those connectors were for communications and other functions. It's a chassis for PLC-5. And you notice 
that that first slot has an extra connector. Again, that's for the control bus to activate those I.O. modules. And those I.O. modules that slid in there, that other thing laying there is a swing arm, and it pivots on a bottom rail. And if you look in the picture here, right at the top of the terminal strip, you see a little tab. You push down, you can release that, and it pivots down so you can remove the cart. Now what's unique about this chassis is that there's no processor. Instead, over on the far left, you have a remote I.O. adapt and you have two blue cables coming in. Those are network cables. That means that all of this I.O. reached the processor in another chassis by way of a net. Also, if you're looking for a power supply, that's all the way over on the right and that's a single slot power supply and that supplies power to the back plane not only for the remote I.O. adapter, but all the I.O. module. Mount the PLC in a panel, connect it up to the terminal strips, and this is what it looks like. This is a family of controllers. All of these are controllers because they all have a processor and fixed I.O. All the MicroLogics are controllers. None of them are processors. They all have fixed I.O. You see several of these have I.O. modules that you can add on right in the middle that you see a I.O. module sitting right next to it and a ribbon cable connecting it. That is the back plane. They don't actually plug into slots. They just have ribbon cables that jumper from one module to the next. On the upper right, they have connectors that slide from one module to the left into the previous. And there's a little tab that you roll over and it pushes a connector into processor and the last thing you have to have is an end cap back plane termination this is a more current family microcontrollers this is the micro 810 you slide in a special little adapter that costs forty dollars and that's a usb connection the micro 820 and it has an ethernet port and up at the top of the processor you see six terminals that's a hardwired rs-232 two covers there that you can add snap-in modules this is the 850 at the top an ethernet that's ethernet ip the rs-232 round din connector and you have a USB right below that, the mode switch. A quick mention of Control Logics, what they call a PAC, a programmable automation controller. This platform is anything you want, anywhere you want, for any reason you want. A quick mention of some other types of remote I.O. This is Flex I.O. With any kind of remote I.O., you will always see some sort of adapter on the left end, whether it's control net, Ethernet, data highway, whatever it is. Now, I can see both of these are Ethernet, and I see dual ports. This is Point I.O. We also show an Ethernet. Okay, we, we covered hardware now. So we've put you in the picture. What does a PLC do? We talked about the input devices, the output devices, and we talked about hardware. The next subject is what's inside of the hardware. And specifically, we're talking about the processor. And the main element of a processor is its RAM or memory. And what you download into the RAM or memory is the elements of a project that you did offline that are compiled into machine code, machine level language, that's going to run the system if you like, the program. Now, when you wrote the program, you probably wrote it in ladder logic diagrams, not in machine level language. And honestly, if you saw what the program was compiled into, you wouldn't get anything out of it other than a headache looking at all the ones and zeros. So let's just cut right to the chase on this. There are no online programs, only offline programs. And you compile it and you download it into the controller. Also in the controller is the data table, the memory locations that are set aside for inputs, outputs, timers, counters, and any other kind of data that you're using. When you're online with your laptop or computer looking at a PLC program, you're looking at the offline program, but animated with the online data. So what lights up that when you go to online and the colors change, that's just graphics. But when you see things changing on the screen, like highlighted, not highlighted, values changing, that's all coming from the memory in the controller, the processor, up into your computer to, to animate what you're looking at. But what you're looking at, other than data and color changes, is just dead graphics. Okay, so let's look at the hardware. 